Welcome to the Prospective Doctor Podcast, brought to you by Med School Coach. Each week, we cover topics related to the pre med journey to medical school and beyond, from the MCAT to completing your application, and from starting medical school to choosing a specialty. Our podcast will provide essential information for anyone contemplating a career in medicine. Hey there, everyone. Thanks for joining me. It's Dr. Marinelli. Today, I wanted to talk about the prospect of having to reapply to medical school. I know that this is a tough subject. Nobody wants to have to reapply to medical school, but the fact of the matter is... Not everybody gets in. I know that we've shared statistics like this before, but only about 40% of applicants get accepted to medical school. So that means there's 60% of you out there applying that are just not going to get accepted. And a large majority of those people are going to not apply again, but many of them will. And so the fact of the matter is reapplying is very, very common. And you should not think of it a failure on your part if you don't get in, but rather a learning experience and something to be introspective about and figure out some ways that you can better your application should you have to reapply. So let's go through a few steps that you can consider and start thinking about at this point in the application cycle. So number one, think about, do I need to reapply? I know that sounds like a silly question, but what are your chances at this point? We're at the end of January when this podcast is being released. So if you still have 25 schools that you haven't heard from that you still maybe are going to get in, maybe you've had five schools that you've interviewed at, you're still waiting to hear back from, you still have a good chance of getting an acceptance. However, if you're on the flip side of this and maybe you have applied to 30 schools and you heard back from all 28 of them as a denial, well, it's not a very good chance that you're going to get in on those last two remaining schools. And I know a lot of you fall in the middle on these spectrums, but I just wanted to use those two examples as kind of two different boats that somebody can be in and using that as What are your chances of still getting in? Could you still get in this cycle? Obviously, depending on where you are at, definitely talk to us, reach out to your advisor, get some second opinions on whether or not you think you still have a chance, but kind of weigh that out. Think about your application as a whole. If you still have some schools to hear from, but you were denied post-interview at several of them, well, maybe you just didn't interview very well, and maybe that's going to be an area holding you back this year. So think about those things and kind of put yourself in that perspective of actually, do I need to reapply or will I be okay? Number two, be introspective about your desire to be a physician. I don't want to be discouraging to anybody at all, but maybe use this time as a little bit of a blessing in disguise of that, well, I didn't get in this cycle. Is this really the right path for me? Some of you will absolutely say, yes, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do everything I can to better my application. And some of you may think twice about becoming a physician and applying again to medical school. And that's okay. I think you're doing right by yourself by using this time to actually think about what your goals are and think about what you really want. Number three, the most obvious and some of the easiest in some aspects things to address as far as deficiencies in your application and what to think of next is your GPA and MCAT. Is my GPA and MCAT just not high enough? The last application cycle had an average MCAT of a 511 and an average GPA of a 3.7 for matriculants getting into medical school. That's much higher than the people that are just applying. So those are the people that are actually applying and getting in. Where do you stand on those numbers? Did you apply to schools that your MCAT and GPA are competitive at? Did you apply to schools where maybe you just weren't competitive enough at and those kind of dominated your entire school list? Maybe you are far off from that GPA and MCAT. And then also on the flip side, lots of times people with a very high GPA and or MCAT will apply to schools that their averages are much lower. And Although they may think this is a good way to apply and get in, keep those as quote unquote safety schools, some schools see that as they're just a backup and that if that person got accepted to that school, they will unlikely go there. So your school list, even if you have very, very competitive scores, 
if you're only applying to really, really under competitive schools, that may hold you back as well. So think about your numbers and think about if you're actually really competitive or not with those numbers. And then, and I won't go into all of the different ways that you can start addressing things here. Those are topics for another podcast, but start thinking about the ways that you can make up for the deficiency in numbers. Number four, think about your extracurricular activities. So this may be a little bit more of a time-consuming and thoughtful process than just looking at your numbers, but start thinking about those extracurricular activities and are there areas that could really be improved? Do you not have enough shadowing? Have you not had any clinical experience where you've been working with patients? These are all things that admissions committees are going to look at on your application to see if you have. And anywhere that maybe you just don't have a lot of experience or maybe you don't have any experience, that can definitely hold you back on your application and getting an acceptance. So think about those things and think about what are some areas that you can improve on. And maybe in the next year while you're reapplying, maybe there's a certain activity that you need to focus on in order to be a more competitive applicant. Number five, when did you apply? So Probably most of you know that submitting an early application is going to be the most beneficial and that is submitting your AMCAS or your primary application as close to the opening day as possible. So if you submitted after that, start thinking about how late did I submit it? Was I within a few days or was I two months late? In addition, not only should you consider when you submitted your primary application, but you should also consider when you submitted your secondary applications. I see this happen to a lot of applicants each year where maybe they submitted their primary application right when AMCAS opened, but their secondary applications they kind of held on to and it took them a really long time to turn those around. And so those applicants oftentimes get lumped into what I call a later boat of applicants that are going to be offered interviews. And so if you find yourself having submitted your application on the later side, but you're still waiting to hear from schools, well, it kind of puts you in that possibility of still getting interviews. You may just be some of the people that get interviews later. However, if you have heard from a lot of different schools and you haven't gotten accepted and you submitted your application late, well, take that as a sign that next year you need to be more diligent, submit it right on time, right when that application opens, and turn those secondary applications around a lot quicker. Number six, and this is an area that I see really good applicants that maybe don't have other reasons on why they didn't get accepted. Maybe they have great extracurricular activities, really great scores, GPA, awesome application, but maybe their letters of recommendation just weren't very good. And this is a really tough area because you should have those letters of recommendation be blind to you, meaning you should not know what they say. Those are given the most weight by admissions committees. So it's hard to just say, oh yeah, I had a bad letter of recommendation if you didn't read it. But you're going to have to kind of think a lot about those letter writers. Think about your relationship with them. How did they respond to you when you asked them to write you a letter of recommendation? Were they very excited and enthusiastic about it and said they're going to write you a great letter? Or did they just kind of say, yeah, I could write you a letter and maybe you didn't have a great relationship with them. And so maybe those letters that you got aren't as strong as they could be. Another thing to think about is some of those letters could actually have a red flag in them. So maybe you asked a PI to write you a letter of recommendation and maybe you had a bad relationship with somebody in the lab and that PI in that letter, they commented on it and said and mentioned how your teamwork skills or cooperation skills aren't always great. So Think about those letters. Think about if there's any of them that could harm you, or maybe they're just not that good of letters. Maybe they're not glowing and highly recommending you. That can definitely be something that holds an applicant back. It is an area that can be difficult to assess, but I also recommend if you have a good relationship with the letter writer, you could also just go and approach them. 
and say, hey, you know, thank you again so much for writing that letter for me. I haven't gone into medical school this cycle, and I'm just trying to do a really thorough evaluation of my application. Could you just review to me how that letter was written? Was there anything that could be concerning to admissions committees or maybe didn't put me in the best light? If you have a good relationship with them, it's totally appropriate to be open with them and try to get their own feedback as well. Number eight, and we talked about this a little bit, is your school list. Did you apply to, number one, a good enough volume of schools to really have a broad application and have your application go to a lot of different schools? And number two, did you apply to schools where you're competitive at? Successful applicants I see usually apply to about 20 to 30 schools, which is a lot. And so if you applied to less than that, maybe you didn't cast a wide enough net. Also, as I said earlier, did you apply to schools where you're competitive at? Did you undershoot too much? Did you overshoot too much? Did you apply to schools that maybe you are an out-of-state applicant and they don't accept a lot of -of out-of-state applicants? The school list definitely deserves a huge, deep look and assessment of whether or not you made this competitive. Number eight, we touched on this again a little bit, is secondary applications. So not only about the timing, but did you actually put some effort into the secondary applications? Are they well written? Did you represent good qualities about yourself? Did you really show interest in that particular school? Did you make those secondaries specific for each school? Or did you just kind of copy and paste and do a little bit of modification and send it to another school? And the admissions committees maybe don't feel a genuine enthusiasm for you going to their particular school from those secondaries. Definitely take a look at those secondary applications. If you have to reapply, try to start on those early and put a lot of effort into them to really show schools that you are interested in going to their particular medical school. Number nine, your interviews. So if for those of you that got denied after interviews, then really think about how you performed on that interview. If you got multiple denials after interviews, that's probably a sign that you need some work on your interview skills. So start thinking about that. Think about how you can improve in the next year. And when the time comes, if you have to reapply, definitely get some help preparing for your interviews. Number 10, think about your entire application and consider having somebody with experience in medical school admissions look at your application and give it an objective assessment. It's oftentimes really, really hard to kind of look at the activities portion of your application or your personal statement and self-critique yourself on those types of things and say, you know what, that one's very well written. Or I could have done a personal statement that is much more convincing and much more unique. Those aspects of the application are very, very important. And I really suggest having somebody, again, with that objective opinion and that expertise review your application in its entirety and maybe make some suggestions for another personal statement, help you through it, help you highlight important aspects in your activities and give you advice on if maybe those areas were not the strongest part of your application. And also having that person look at all these other aspects that we already talked about. Again, it can be hard to be your own critic. So getting help and having somebody evaluate you and give you solid recommendations on what you can improve is truly invaluable when it comes time to reapplying to medical school. Of course, I will suggest Med School Coach to do this. We are experts in medical school admissions, and every year we evaluate applicants that didn't get in and make recommendations for them moving forward. Definitely reach out to us if you have any questions. We're more than happy to help you through this process. We know how difficult it can be to have to reapply. A lot of us have had to reapply. We've helped many, many applicants reapply and they've subsequently become successful physicians. So reach out to us if needed. Hopefully you still hear some good news in the remaining of this cycle. If not, start using these steps to really think about your application and how you can improve. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Take care. Our mission is to inspire, encourage, and inform students as you journey through a rigorous and intricate process of achieving your dreams in medicine. Visit us at prospectivedoctor.com and medschoolcoach.com for more essential resources in your medical school journey and beyond.